As always, if you haven't done so, please try the question first before listening on. It turns out that we can break up this question into two parts. In part one, we have the person driving the car reacting. And so during that time, there's no braking being done yet, and therefore there's no acceleration. And so we can safely say that there is a constant velocity during the reaction time. But once the person reacts and they apply the brakes to the car, then we have what we call the braking time. And during that time, there definitely is acceleration. Indeed, it's that acceleration that's bringing the car to rest. Let's take a look at the displacements that are occurring during both the reaction time and the braking time. Now these two equations for displacement are taken from kinematics. As noted in part one, there is constant velocity, which means that the acceleration is zero. So in fact, this term right here will drop out of the displacement for part one. In part two, there is acceleration, so we can't cancel that term. Notice that we've called the times t sub r and t sub b. The r, of course, would be referring to the reaction time, and the b would be referring to the braking time. Now the total displacement during this motion can be obtained simply by adding the two displacements of part one and part two of the question. So we're gonna write an expression for the total displacement undergone by the car by simply adding these two displacements from part one and part two. So here we have a nice equation representing the total displacement of the car. We'll notice that the equation contains T sub r, which is the reaction time that we're trying to calculate, but it also contains T sub b. And one of our next goals is going to be to try to replace T sub b with another expression. We're not really interested in calculating the braking time, so it would be nice if we could somehow get rid of this T sub b. And to do that, let's consider the following. During part two of this motion, when the car is braking, we know that the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second because the car is being brought to rest. Well, let's consider this equation from kinematics. Here it is, and because we are braking during this part of the motion, we're using t sub b, which is the braking time. As just noted, the final velocity right here will be zero, so we can substitute that in. What we can then do is solve this equation for t sub b. So we would subtract v initial from both sides of the equation, and then divide both sides by the acceleration a. Now what's really nice about this is that we now have the braking time in terms of two things that we either know or are interested in finding. The initial velocity was given in the question, so that's advantageous, and then the part B of the question is asking us for acceleration. So here we have A in the formula. So this is nice because it's in terms of something we either have or we want. So we're going to go ahead and make a substitution. Here is our expression for T sub B, the braking time. We can plug that in to both this point in our earlier equation as well as that point right there. So let's go ahead and do that. There we have the substitution. We can simplify this a little bit. We have a plus and a minus sign right there and there. So we're gonna actually end up just calling this a subtraction. Also, the initial velocity times this initial velocity will become initial velocity squared. We can go ahead and also square out the initial velocity as well as the acceleration in this side. So let's clean this up just a little bit. And actually, because we have an a in the numerator and an a squared in the denominator, we can cancel a little bit, leaving just one a in the denominator. And then actually these two green terms here are just about like terms. If we multiplied this denominator by two as well as the numerator, we would therefore get the common denominator of two a, and then we can add the like terms of negative two v naught squared plus one v naught squared. So that'll become a minus one v naught squared over two a. Of course, we can actually take out this one here for simplicity. And there we have it. We now have an equation that represents the total displacement that the car undergoes in terms of things that we know or we want to calculate. We have the initial velocities which were given in the question, and then we have the reaction time which we're trying to solve for in part A, and then the acceleration which we're trying to solve for in part B. So it's a pretty convenient equation. Now perhaps next what we can do is plug in some of the known information. Notice we're going to have to do this twice because we were given two initial speeds and two total distances. For example, the total distance in one case was 56.7 meters and the speed was 80.5 kilometers per hour. That was one case. But then the second case, the total distance was 24.4 meters and the initial speed was 48.3 kilometers per hour. So we're going to have to plug in twice into this equation with these two sets of conditions. Also, it's probably wise to convert the 80.5 kilometers per hour into meters per second and the 48.3 kilometers per hour also into meters per second. So let's actually do that first. 
will show the conversion for the 80.5 kilometers per hour only. The other conversion will be similar. Now, of course, we know that one kilometer contains a thousand meters, and then we also know that one hour contains 3,600 seconds. So these hours will cancel, the kilometers will also cancel. That's going to leave us with meters per second. So let's just go ahead and process this. We get 22.4 meters per second. So just keep in mind, instead of calling this 80.5 when we plug in, we're going to use 22.4. A similar conversion will be used to change the, uh, the 48.3 kilometers per hour into meters per second. And you should find that that's 13.4 meters per second. So now we're ready to plug into the equation under the two sets of conditions, the blue conditions and the red conditions. Now at this point in the problem, it turns into a, an algebra problem, essentially the physics is complete. We've got two equations with two unknowns, those unknowns being t sub r and also the acceleration. So there are many ways to do this, but perhaps one way might be to solve each equation for 2a and then set those equations equal to each other. So we could do that by subtracting the 22.4 tr over to the other side we would have a negative sign left on the right side, so we can actually just multiply both sides by negative 1. That would change this to a positive, that would change this to a negative, and change this to a positive. Now if we notice that the entire left side is over 1, we can actually invert both sides of this equation. And then finally multiply both sides by 22.4 squared. Do it on the right side, and also on the left side here of the equation. So we've isolated 2a. We can do the same thing with the red equation, isolate 2a. I won't go through all the steps, but when you do so, you should get the following. Now that we have both equations in terms of 2a, we can equate them. We could set this equation equal to this one right here. Let's go ahead and then square the numerators. We could then cross multiply. If you have any questions about that cross-multiplying, please let me know in the comments. At this point, it's going to be pretty easy. We can just subtract this guy over to the right side. We can add this guy over to the left side. And then divide both sides by the 2701. When you do that, you should get approximately 0.763 seconds for the reaction time. Now that's nice, because that's the answer to part A of the question. Part B is going to be really easy now, because we had a nice equation that we can use to solve for the acceleration. Let's bring that back into the picture. So here's the blue equation from before. This is actually solved in terms of 2a, so all we have to do is multiply both sides by a half. And when we do that on the left side, just make sure to put that in parentheses. And then this half and this 2 will cancel out, of course. And then finally, when you take this reaction time that we just found and plug it in right there into the denominator and then process all that on your calculator, you're going to easily solve for the acceleration. And you should get approximately negative 6.33 meters per second squared for the acceleration. So as always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like it, please feel free to subscribe so that you can stay tuned for additional solutions to common questions. And then if you have your own question, you can send it to the email address listed on the screen.